In this video, we are going to discuss about the biological classification in which we will discuss about the two, three, four and five kingdom systems of classification and will be focusing on the five kingdom system of classification. So the first one being the two kingdom system of classification. This was the first kingdom system of classification proposed by Carolus Linnaeus in 1758. So Carolus Linnaeus in 1758 suggested kingdom system of classification and he divided the world into two kingdoms, kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia. But this, king, this two kingdom system of classification was discarded due to some shortcomings in this kingdom system of classification. For example, we know the distinction between the higher and familiar plants and animals is quite clear, but at the lower or the cellular level of organization, there are several instance, instances where it is not easy to recognize them as any particular plant or animal that is, they have dual characters, they have dual characters in nature or the unicellular organisms may show dual character for example chlamydomonas so this organism chlamydomonas is a motile organism having a definite shape and has a photosen the photosensitive organelle like animals so they can move they can locomote and also have a photosensitive organelle like the animals but the problem is that this organism that is chlamydomonas bears chlorophyll for photosynthesis like autotropic plants so it has a dual nature of both plant and animal like this there are several other organisms at the cellular level that share dual nature so for this it was a problem being classifying them into either plant or animal so their was a need of including another kingdoms. So this two kingdom system of classification by Carolus Linnaeus was discarded. Next came the three kingdom system of classification, which was proposed by Ernst Haeckel in 1866. So what it did is that he created a new kingdom called the Protista for bacteria, fun fungi and protozoa which are cellular grade of body organization. So what Ernst Haeckel did is he included one more kingdom into the living world that is the kingdom Protista in which bacteria, fun fun fungi and protozoans the, that is the organism having cellular level of organization or cellular grade, cellular grade of body organization were classified. So this Three kingdom system of classification was also discarded due to some drawbacks. So here is the drawback. The drawback of three kingdom system of classification was that it includes prokaryotes and eukaryotes together and did not separate primitive multicellular organisms from the unicellular ones. So what it did, this three kingdom system of classification the main drawbacks was it included both the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes in the same kingdom and did not separate the primitive multicellular organisms from the unicellular ones. So this also had some drawbacks. So it was discarded and then came the four kingdom system of classification proposed by Copland in 1956. So Copland introduced one more kingdom that is Mycota or Monera into the living world. So another kingdom was introduced into the living world that is the Mycota or Monera for the, for the prokaryotic unicellular organisms. So in this system fungi was kept with, within the kingdom plantae. So this was another this was the main drawback of this four kingdom system of classification as fungi are way different from kingdom plantae since because of their fixed nature fungi was kept in kingdom plantae but that was uh, one of the wrong classification. So this four kingdom system of classification was also discarded and finally the <sighs> Finally, the five kingdom system of classification came and was proposed by Robert H. Whitaker, an American taxonomist. 
divided the living walls into five kingdoms monera protista fungi plantae and animalia so he included one more kingdom for fungi that is a separate kingdom from for fungi into the living world resulting in the formation of this five kingdom system of classification and presently we have this five kingdom system of classification so we are going to learn in depth the five kingdom system of classification now so what are the criteria for five kingdom system of classification as we can see here in this arrangement Whitaker divided the living worlds into five kingdoms based on the following criteria so Robert H Whitaker followed the five criteria or considered the five criteria for classifying the organisms into the five kingdom system of cla uh, classification so the five criteria were the complexity of the cell structure number one the complexity of cell structure the complexity of organism's body, modes of nutrition, fourth is the mode of energy utilization, and the last one is the phylogenetic relationship among the organism. So now we are going to study in detail about this, the complexity of cell structure. The first criteria being the complexity of cell structure. So on the basis of nucleus and structural complexity, two types of cells are recognized as we can, as we know, they are the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells. So simple prokaryotic types as in bacteria, blue-green algae and rickettsia. Second one, the complex eukaryotic type as there's printing mistake. It will be as cells of protista, fungi, plants and animals. So he took into consideration the complexity of cell structure that is the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. As we know, prokaryotes have does not have any well organized nucleus and lacks membrane bound cell organelles, whereas eukaryotes have well organized nucleus, nuclear membrane material separated from the cytoplasmic material by a nuclear membrane, and have well organized nucleus and have organelle bound cell organelles, membrane sorry membrane bound cell organelles. So this was all about the structural complexity or the complexity of cell structure. Next is the complexity of organism's body that is multicellular or unicellular organism. So organic evolution has revealed that earliest organisms were unicellular and simple prokaryote. So the organism that evolved in the primitive earth like the archibacteria were Primitive, these primitive organisms were prokaryotes, generally prokaryotes, and were unicellular organisms. Later on, complex eukaryotic forms evolved. So, from these prokaryotes, eukaryotes evolved with well organized nuclear, nucleus, membrane bound cell organelles. So, from these prokaryotes, eukaryotes evolved, and some of them, some of them, in due course of time evolved into simple multicellular organism many of them later on became complex so some organism became simple multicellular from those unicellular organisms and many of them later on became complex that is evolved into complex organisms next the third criteria is the mode of energy utilization the mode of new energy utilization so the in the mode of energy utilization we have producers consumers and decomposers the three stages in which energy is utilized in the living world so the producers are the green plants and the green plants are called producers because they with the help of chlorophyll entrap light energy these green plants are called producers because they with the help of chlorophyll entrap light energy of sun into chemical energy in carbohydrates that are synthesized from simple inorganic compounds namely co2 and water so what producers does is they trap the solar energy or the light energy using or with the help of chlorophyll and transfers into the it into the chemical energy of carbohydrates and these are synthesized these carbohydrates are synthesized using simple inorganic compounds such as carbon dioxide and water which is the process of photosynthesis that is producers 
follow the process of photosynthesis or goes through the process of photosynthesis to produce carbohydrates and they store energy in the form of carbohydrates. Then the next is the consumers. These are animals which eat plants. So consumers acquire energy from the plants. They are called herbivores. They are called herbivores or primary consumers. They are also called primary consumers. Some animals prey upon herbivores and so there are larger animals which prey upon herbivores and are called carnivores or secondary consumers and there are further larger carnivorous animals which feed on secondary consumers and are called tertiary consumers. So these were the level of consumer herbivores are the primary consumer then comes the secondary consumer or the carnivores or and then comes the large carnivores which eat the secondary car carnivores or prey upon the secondary carnivores and are called secondary consumer secondary consumers or tertiary consumers then are the decomposers so these decomposers are bacteria and fungi which decompose remains of dead animals and plants into simple inorganic compound these compounds are utilized as chemical nutrients by the producers so Bacteria and fungi decompose the remains of dead animals and dead plants into simple inorganic compounds and return those compounds into the environment and producers in turn use these chemical nutrients for, the pro for their growth and for the process of photosynthesis and their process of growth. Then we come to the modes of nutrition. The modes of nutrition are basically divided into two groups that is the photosynthetic Sorry, autotropic or the photosynthetic um, which includes the photoautotrophs and chemosynthetic which includes the chemoautotrophs and the heterotrophic nutrition includes saprotrophs and halo halotrophs. So, in autotrophic nutrition, green plants and some bacteria which are photosynthetic bacteria synthesize their organic food from CO2 and water in presence of sunlight that is by the process of photosynth photosynthesis. So, they are termed as autotrophic or photoautotrophs and the chemoautotrophs are those organisms that get energy from oxidation of inorganic mater mater materials this is called and this process is called chemosynthesis and those organisms are called chemoautotrophs then comes the heterotrophic nutrition in heterotrophic nutrition organisms that belong to heterotrophic nutrition are also belonging from the sub saprotrophs and the halotrophs Sap in the case of saprotrophic nutrition or the saprotrophs heterotrophs absorb fluid food from the body surface that is the organism that uh, absorb fluid food from with the help of from their body surface are called the saprotrophs in case of animals they are called saprozoic nutrition for example artworm and in case of plants they are called saprophytic nutrition example fungi and fungi does not belong to pure plants they are under another kingdom that is the kingdom fun fungi and then is the holozoic nutrition that is most of the animals take solid food throw their mouth and digest it in their long alimentary canal the, and this type of organism which ingest food and digest in, in the food inside their body are called holotrops. Certain organisms like euglena have more than one mode of nutrition and they are called mixotrops. This is another mode of nutrition that is the mixotrophic nutrition. That is an organism having more than one mode of nutrition are called the mixotrophic nutrition. So this was all about the nutrition and the last one being the phylogenetic relationship. Phy what is phylogeny? First, what is phylogeny? Phylogeny is the evolutionary history of an organism. So the main de important and main definition of phylogeny is the evolutionary history of an organism. So the evolutionary history of an organism is called phylogeny. So it is mainly the true kinship, kinship among themselves that is the true relationship among organisms. The phylogenetic relationships are ascertained from morphology, cytology, genetics, biochemistry, cell biology, physiology for correcting groups, correcting and grouping of organisms. Therefore, the so 
phylogenetic relationships are one of the important criteria for grouping organism into kingdoms as this takes into consideration all the principles of biology for grouping organism into kingdom in, into several kingdoms so in the five kingdom system of classification monera, monera seems to have given rise to protista so from monera came the protista and from protista evolved the, uh, the other remaining three multicellular or the three kingdoms of multicellular organism fungi plantae and animalia along separate lines so the phylogenetic relationship shows that monerans gave rise to the protistans and from protistans came the other three multicellular kingdoms that is fungi plantae and animalia so fungi were the first to arise from protista as the phylogenetic relationship says or it is proven by the phylogenetic relationship that is the fungi were the first to arise from protista and a billions of years later this protista gave rise to kingdom animalia and about and about 350 and about 350 million years ago this this protistans gave rise to kingdom plantae so this was all about the phylogenetic relationship and all the five all the five criteria in under which whitaker classified the living world that is complexity of cell structure complexity of organisms body mode of nutrition mode of energy utilization and phylogenetic relationship so these five were the main criterion for classification of living world into the five kingdom system of classification so next we come to the comparison between all these five kingdoms so the first one being the cell type so monerans are prokaryotic cells that is monerans have prokaryotic cells and all the other four protista fungi plantae and animalia have eukaryotic cells cell wall is non cellulosic in monera contains polysaccharide plus amino contains polysaccharide plus amino acid protista in protista some forms or some organism contain cell wall not all protistans have cell walls fungi have have cell wall that is non cellulosic cell wall the main component of the cell wall of fungi is chitin so it is a chitinous cell wall fungi has chitinous cell wall or it is also called chitin in plantae the cell wall is cellulosic and animalia cell wall is totally absent next is the nuclear membrane monera in monerans nuclear membrane is absent as they have prokaryote as they have prokaryotic cells and all the other protista fungi plantae animalia the nuclear membrane is present as they are eukaryotes next the body organization monera and protista has cellular level of body organization that is they are unicellular organism and fungi have multicellular organism and or loose tissue loose tissue system so there are several fungi for example yeast which is unicellular or have loose tissues in plant they have tissue and organs and in animalia animalia the body organization is into tissue organ and organ system the modes of nutrition next is the mode of nutrition monera has both autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition in autotrophic they are both photosynthetic and chemosynthetic and under heterotrophic they are both saprophytic or parasitic next is protista is mainly autotrophic photosynthetic and also some are heterotrophic in nature so protista have only photosynthetic mode of autotrophism and they are also heterotrophic fungi are mostly heterotrophic consisting of saprophytic and parasitic plantae autotrophic that is photosynthesis photosynthetic there are several plants which are chemosynthetic in nature also but those are very rare but the main mode of nutrition of kingdom plantae is autotrophic or photosynthetic mode of nutrition and animals are they are heterotrophic holozoic or saprophytic 
so this was all about the five kingdom system of classification and the biological classification